Hey, my name's Donovan. I'm a product manager at Maxon, and in this video, I want to talk about a couple of new scene nodes that are what I'm using to create these sorts of uh, fun shaped vases uh, with sort of randomized thicknesses. So uh, let me just show you what one of these looks like sort of interactively. I can change the seed value and generate a completely different vase shape based on this. Uh, I've got controls over my inner radius, my outer radius, and I can adjust my noise scale to sort of adjust to how many of these uh, various shapes we're going to see in here. And um, it's going to be, I hope, uh, not too difficult to set up. Uh, on the inside of this, we've got a few nodes that we're going to be going over. Uh, we're building a very simple line spline at the start here with just a couple of points. Uh, we're using a resample spline to add additional points along the length of our spline for more uh, control. Uh, then this points modifier here is attaching a random weight value to each point. The outline spline is taking those random weight values and thickening our spline based on them. And then I'm just doing a simple uh, resample here again to uh, bring the number of points into to something that's sort of nice and clean to work with. We're lathing that that spline to give it some um, shape and roundness. Then we're thickening that and then subdividing the final result to get a nice, a nice uh, smooth result. So let's go ahead and dive into building this. Um, so first things first, I'm going to create a new project file. And I'll just go to my nodes layout so we've got all the, uh, the things we need close at hand. I'm just going to drag over my console to the right here and sort of hide that away as we don't need it uh, immediately. Next up, I'm going to add a nodes uh, spline. And my node spline here is a way of building a uh, custom spline primitive using nodes. I'm going to build this up from scratch using uh, some simple points just to sort of show uh, what's going on under the hood. So I'm going to start by adding a build node. And I got that by double clicking to open up my commander. And I'm choosing build array. The build array node makes a list of elements. So I'm going to change my element type here from no type specified to vector. And a vector is uh, basically an XYZ coordinate that you can use sort of like a list of points. So I'm going to truncate or remove the last couple of options here. I've got my start and I've got my end. And uh, for the end here, uh, I can specify a Y value to adjust my height. So I'm going to add another input here, which you can find under um, do, 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 do user interface. And inside, there's a whole list of different things. I'm adding an IO float size. I'm just going to drag that over. But you could also double click and search for IO float if you know the type or IO size and you'll get some options there. So this size value, I'm now going to pipe into the Y here, and I'm going to call this height. So now I've got two points, uh, one at 0, 0, 0, and another at Y um, you know, height. And now I'm going to use this to build a spline. So I'm going to choose to assemble my spline, and I'm going to drag out this points array into my assemble spline, and I'm going to connect this wire here to the output. If I want to do that more quickly, I can just select this spline uh, node here and tap Q. Um, but be careful because sometimes you might accidentally tap Q over here, which will toggle this whole thing on or off. So make sure you're in the node editor when you do that. So uh, if I drag this over to the side, we'll see that we've got a spline right there. I'm going to drag it back to the center. So uh, next up, what I want to do is take a look at the points in here. An easy way to visualize those is in your viewport, go to Options and turn on Point Indexes. And now you will see a little uh, indicator for every single point. And I can now choose to resample my spline. And I'm doing this just so I can add in a, you know, a certain number of points. Um, my last time I played around with this, I found 17 or so to be a kind of helpful number. Not too many, not too few. And we're now going to take these points and start kind of um, messing with them uh, with a noise. So for every single one of these points, I want to kind of move it over to the side uh, with a noise value. So uh, there's a few ways I could do that. I could do it with um, the points modifier and modifying the points directly, or I can use uh, the outline spline node. So uh, let's take a look at the outline spline node. This is also new in 2024.5. So I'm going to double click in here and choose outline. And I'm going to drag that right here next to my resample spline. So um, I feel like these. Points might get a little bit distracting, so I'm going to turn them off by going to Options, uh, Point Indexes. And my outline spline, I am now going to give it a thickness, 
And as we look at this, it's not really clear where it's going or what's happening. So my plane here is currently set to auto. I'm gonna set it to X, Y. So now it knows how to thicken this. And because I'm gonna be bringing this into a lathe, I can adjust my, um, my output. Am I going to have uh, my inside or my outside? And I want just my outside. And am I going to have a round top or a round bottom? Am I going to have a top or a bottom? So at the bottom, I definitely want to have that flat piece there. So I'm gonna keep it as linear. But at the end, I'm making a vase, right? So I want this to be um, sort of open at the top. And uh, there we go. Now I can't really see what's going on there. Um, if I want to give this that sort of like rounded radius, I could add a lathe object in my objects manager and drag in this. And now I've got this sort of tube shape. Um, and this is, you know, a pretty simple thing. You know, an, an example of what you might do here if you wanted is use a chamfer spline node. And you could adjust the fillet on the bottom. And then all of a sudden you've actually got something that's uh, pretty close to a, uh, a vase if you want that. So uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this. And we're going to now uh, feed this outline thickness with a map. So uh, rather than having every single point have the same thickness, we're going to store a random value on a point and use that to control my thickness. And that's gonna be you know, uh, controlled with this thickness map. So I'm just gonna set my thickness here to one, which is the default. And then um, my thickness map is gonna act as a multiplier. So to build that thickness map, we're now going to use something called the points modifier. So if I add a points, modifier. I can drag it straight on this wire. And the points modifier goes through every single point and it makes an adjustment of some kind. I've got an entire video on the points modifier if you want to look at it in more detail. Um, but the thing that I want to do here is control the, th the, the thickness of my vertex map. And if I want, I can actually um, create a custom name here. So I'm just going to rename vertex map thickness. I'm just going to copy that text, go to my outline spline and punch in my thickness map right here. And now I'm using that exact value. Now, uh, diving into my points modifier, I now see this thickness port and I wanna control that value. So I could control it with, let's say, uh, the index of the point. And what we'll see is that the higher the index climbs, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 17 or however many points we had the thicker this gets. So if I was to go back to my resample spline, add more points, we'd see it was getting thicker and thicker because we've got uh, more points, which leads to more output. So I'm gonna go back to, I think it was 17 before, go back into my points modifier. And uh, now I actually want to control my, um, my value here with a noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a noise and uh, use the sample noise node, which allows us to grab uh, the value of a noise, like this sort of black and white random field at a position. So I'm gonna punch in my position right here, and I'm gonna punch the output here into thickness. And uh, if we sort of zoom in here, we do see that there is a variation in thickness, but it's, um, it's pretty fine, right? We wanna have a larger uh, range here. So I'm gonna, do the IO size, I'm gonna add two of these. One IO size, another IO size. I'm gonna call this inner radius. I'm gonna call this outer radius. I'm just double clicking to rename. And I'm gonna remap this noise value with these two values. So I'm gonna do a range mapper. And my output min and my output max are now based on these two values. So if I set my inner radius to something like five, and my outer radius is something like 15, we get something kind of like this. And we now see that this random value that we're assigning to the points is controlling the thickness of our outline. Now, uh, another way that we could have done this, maybe even more direct, would be to just uh, pipe this value that we're creating into the output position, right? So if I if I take my input position and I just wire up the XYZ, 
sort of linking these together, I could say, actually, this is going to become my X position, map it over like that, and now this is my spline. It's going to look basically the same, except we've got a gap on the bottom. And I could use an add point to add a point right there at the bottom. And this is the same result. So it's really kind of up to you whether it feels more intuitive to directly manipulate the points or whether to set a weight value that's controlling the thickness, let's say, of your outline spline. So I've got something like this. Um, I'm going to probably want to tweak on my noise here the scale value. So if I take that scale, drag it out and choose Add New Input, I now have uh, a few values that I have control over. So I'm going to take this uh, inner radius, drag it out, choose Add New Input. Same thing for outer radius, same thing for scale. Let's call this noise scale. Uh, and we probably also want to bring out the seed value. That's a, an important value here. So I'm hitting Command on this little dot to expose it, dragging it out, choosing Add New Input. And I'm going to do the same thing on the outside here. So I can change my seed, and I get a different value. But they're all sort of disconnected. If I adjust my noise scale down to something smaller like 0.1 or 0.025 even, Let's see. You start to see how these sort of ripple through. If I set my inner radius to something like 10 and my outer radius to something like 30, we start to see this even more. And um, something I might want to do is to resample the output of this again. So I've got a more uniform distribution of points. So here I'm going to come in and choose to resample my spline. And I'm going to resample at an even step of, let's say, 5 or 10 units. That looks about right. And um, I'm now going to, uh, and then I'm going to choose uniform, right? So it's a nice even distribution of these. I'm going to thicken uh, this. I'm going to add a thicken generator, drag my lathe in here. So I can adjust my uh, overall uh, thickness, excuse me. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface object. So we can get this nice and smooth. And now I've got sort of random base shape generator. And again, I can come in here. I can adjust my seed value. I can adjust my noise scale. The smaller I make this, the sort of the larger these distortions are going to be. I can adjust the delta between my inner and my outer radius. And again, by adjusting my seed here, I'm getting very different values. So uh, here that I'm seeing sort of the consequences of that negative inner seed or inner uh, radius. But here we are. I've got a sort of a random vase generator that I made um, reasonably easily using scene nodes. So uh, again, to walk through our setup, the build array is making uh, a simple two-point spline. The assemble spline is taking those two points and again, turning it into a spline. The resample spline is adding additional detail. And we can kind of step through this and see each step. So I'm just going to turn these off. So we've got our spline. If I turn on my point indexes, we'll see uh, those point indexes. The resample is adding additional points. The points modifier is adjusting the weights of this. It's adding a weight or a strength value here named thickness. Outline spline is using that thickness to outline these points and to give us a sort of a cap on the bottom. And resample spline is making these a more uniform distribution of points to make it cleaner when we lathe it and give us a nice uh, set of uh, points to work with when we thicken it. And a subdivision surface at the end to give us a nice soft organic feeling. And uh, here we have a, uh, a vase that looks pretty darn good to me, and that is, uh, that's that. Please uh, play around with this, and I'd love to see anything that you create by following this tutorial. Uh, if you've got uh, questions, uh, feel free to post those as well, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much. Have a good one.